there is a place that is spoken about only in whispers. A dark area that spawns the beginnings of urban legends. A place where anything can happen and usually does. During the light of day, it hides just outside of you. But when the sun goes down, spirits, creatures of the night, roam free. And things do go bump in the night. It is in every state and every country. And there is no escaping it. No matter how safe you feel behind your locked doors and latched windows. So we invite you to turn down the lights and turn up your radio while we join Dave Schrader and Tim Dennis, your hosts, on a journey into the darkness on the edge of town. Good evening and welcome back to the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. This is your host, Dave Schrader, along with me as always, co-host and producer, Tim Dennis. I'd like to thank you uh, for tuning in, checking out our show. Thank you for spreading the news on places like MySpace, MyParaspace, the Taps Board, Sci-Fi Boards, any place that you know of that has paranormal fans that would love to tune in and, and learn a little bit more about the paranormal with us. Please make sure to uh, get the word out. They can check us out at darknessradio.com or at paranormalradioshow.com. This evening, uh, Tim and I would like to welcome one of our new sponsors to the show. Uh, you've all had the chance to hear on the show in the past, CJ Sellers, the medium. She is a sponsor now on the show and uh, has a, a great little program available. If you'd like to contact people that have crossed over, uh, if you'd like to um, you know, make that completion and, and uh, get some closure, you can contact CJ. She's a fantastic person, a uh, really, uh, really neat lady, and everybody that's come into contact with her absolutely loves what she does for them. If you do mention that you heard her on our show, you get $10 off of a reading. You can contact CJ by going to her website at www.cjmedium.com. Again, that's cjmedium.com. Or you can call her at 612-839-0866. She can talk to people from all over the world and uh, do the readings for you right from the comfort of your own home. So if you'd like to get, make those connections and uh, speak to people that have crossed over, please give CJ a call. She is a friend of the show. She's one of the few people that I've actually had the experience to come across in the uh, time that we've been doing the show. There's quite a few psychics and mediums and self-purported uh, sensitives out there who I don't feel can do what she says she can do, and we've seen her do it in action. So uh, I, you know, we both highly respect CJ and think she's a fantastic person to uh, deal with. So again, you can check her out at www.cjmedium.com, 612-839-0866. Mention to her that you heard her on the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show, and you'll save $10 off the cost of a reading. This evening, we've got a really great show lined up for you. From the hit TV show on the Sci-Fi channel that just returned a few weeks ago here for season 2.5 or season 3. We're going to have to get to the bottom of that because everybody keeps seeming to uh, change the title for us. We have fellow ghost hunter and uh, co-host of the show, Grant Wilson. This is Grant's first appearance on the show with us. Grant, thanks a lot for joining us. Hey, anytime. How you doing? Doing great. Doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. Well, doing that, really good. That's good to hear. Boy, you guys are off to a great start with the first two episodes. Yeah, you know, it, it, it demonstrates kind of what the season's all about. Some good evidence and some, some good debunking, so we're excited. Now, is this season the wrap-up of season two, or have they officially called it season three? Yeah, you know, we're not sure what's up with that. <laughs> officially, it's, uh, it's the last half of season two, so yeah, 2.5. But it certainly feels like season three. Definitely, yeah. There was quite a quite a long delay in there, uh, at least not as long as between the first season and second season. I know, as a fan of the show, I'm glad to see you guys back in action so quickly. The shows have been great. Uh, the second season, I've really enjoyed them, and especially these new new episodes. I don't know if it's just because I'm starved for watching you guys back on the show or not, but they've been really kind of a cool little opportunity to watch into the uh, dynamic of the Ghost Hunters again. Yeah, that's our tactic. We make you guys just. Wait and wait and wait, and then whatever we put on there is good. <laughs> <laughs> you're hooking us like crack babies. I see what you're doing, Grant. Uh, we've got a lot of questions that people have emailed in to us. Uh, we're going to open up the phone lines. If you have a question for Grant, you can reach us at 612-375-1400. Again, that phone number is 612-375-1400. We'll be taking your phone calls. At the top of the hour, uh, we're going to be going over, and with a little bit of luck, we're going to be joined by Jason Hawes, the other co-host and star of the show, Ghost Hunters. He'll be joining Grant and uh, here to answer your questions. Um, we're 
pretty sure Jason should be able to join us. He's had a few things going on in his life, and he was a little busy today, but he's going to do his best to at least stop in for a, a short time to share with us and answer some of your questions. We appreciate that. And for people that have emailed in questions for both Grant and for Jason and Grant, we're going to pick out a couple of people by the end of the show, and we will be including some autographed copies of TAPS Paramag that uh, are going to come courtesy of uh, Dr. Blue Stroke. We'll get those autographed by Jason and Grant for you so that we can get them out to you. So why don't we get to the questions here, Grant? Um, okay. Gotta, I know everybody's first question, everybody who's been badgering me wants to know what your first experience was. And like with Jason, we know that that's not something you're going to give up, at least not at this point in your life yet that you want to talk about. Um, so maybe you could give us a little bit of uh, background, though, about you know the age you were when you had your first experience and, and not so much telling us what happened to you, but can you tell us what kind of sent us off you know, in, into researching the paranormal, what made you decide to go deeper into examining it? Sure, and that's not a problem. I was, uh, I was around the age of 15 um, when things started going weird, and uh, it lasted, it was pretty intense and lasted for about two years. Um, I had uh, a couple close friends that were witnesses to it and uh, were able to prove to me that, you know, I wasn't going insane or anything like that. Or, um, but I can say that what happened to me was was something that you don't run into very often in the paranormal. And I've yet to meet anyone that's even had a similar experience. And, um, you know, I, I, of course, started looking for answers, and I found zero on what happened to me. Nothing. People would make guesses about it, but didn't really, uh, they didn't really, hadn't really experienced it, and they were just theorizing. And... Uh, you know, to this, it, it led me to to question all avenues of the paranormal, and of course, I met up with Jason, and uh, he was sharing the same interest I did. Like, let's cut through the cut to the chase. Let's get rid of the garbage and, and find the real answers. And uh, you know, to this day, I've I've been able to help a lot of people, but I haven't found any answers as far as my own thing is concerned. <laughs> now, have you come across what happened to you to get you into this? Has it happened to you again since? Uh, occasionally here and there, but it wasn't like uh, the the first two years. It was pretty intense and and uh, very frequent. Okay, all right. You know we've got whatever that means, right? Right, exactly. Well, but no, that kind of gives us a hint. I, you know, I mean. It sounds funny to me. It's almost like these TV shows, Supernatural or whatever. There's some major event that happened, and then they spend the whole rest of their, you know, TV series trying to figure out what that thing was, like the X Files. What the hell happened to Mulder's sister? It's almost like that right. same chase you are on to try to find out what it really was, and and you know how it's well, going for. A lot for. of people, a lot of people ask. You know, they assume and they'll say, you know, so what's it like to be able to see spirits and stuff? And I'm like, no, it has nothing to do with that. I mean, it's something <laughs> totally different. So. uh that's all I can say, really. <laughs> you know, Grant, uh, there's a lot of speculation that you were molested by a succubus. And if that's what you'd like to talk to us about, you know, we're okay to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. Damn it. Here, I thought we were going to have a great scoop for you. Um, hey, we got a question here from Deb in North Carolina. She says, love you guys. And I was wondering how your first solo investigation went. How old were you and where was the investigation at? And did it scare the crap out of you at the time you did it? <laughs> Well, um, my first investigation was obviously into myself and what happened to me. And no, I, it wasn't scary. It was, it was, it altered reality for me. I mean, it was, it is that weird. But, um, but uh, I was 15. But I mean, as far as like going into a home or something like that, mm -hmm. um, I didn't do that as as you know as a researcher and stuff like that and to going into someone else's home as a client until i was with jay other than that i investigated friends places i had um done my own experimentations and research and things like that okay so you you hadn't really you weren't striking out at the age of 16 with a couple of young ghost hunters and uh, checking it out you you really got more involved with it when you got involved with uh, jason doing the actual investigations Right, because I had I had no need to do that. I, my answer didn't didn't work. The things, the questions I was trying to answer didn't work that way. So okay. I had no need to go into someone else's house. All right, we've got a call on line two. It looks like from April and uh, April. If you can make sure to speak up, I know the phone hybrids kind of act strange here. Grant, if you can't hear the question really well, you just ask me and I'll try to clarify it for you. All April, right. are you with us? I am. Um, hi, Grant. Uh, as a paranormal investigator myself, I've, I've been involved in some investigations that just wiped me out. 
and completely drained me energetically afterward. Have you been on investigations that did that to you, and do you have any theory as to why that might happen? Sure, sure. Good question, by the way. Um, yeah, that has happened. That happens quite often. Um, usually when the activity is pretty intense. Um, I think every investigator that's been in it for a little while will be able to say that, yeah, they've had that same experience. And, uh, <clears throat> I mean, one of the predominant theories is that in order to manifest, people believe that an entity has to, to, has to draw an energy, and sometimes they take it out of the, the air, the thermal energy, and you c produce a cold spot. Sometimes they, you know, they believe that it's taken out of batteries, and sometimes they believe it's taken out of you. Um, whenever you're on a case, you're going to feel some kind of anxiety, and you can either turn that into fear or you can turn that into laughter. Yeah, obviously, Jay and I like to turn it into laughter. But, um, you know, sometimes if that, that energy, you know, is there, sometimes it can wipe you out. And I don't, I'm not sure... Personally, I'm not sure if it's a ghost that's pulling it from you or if you are just in a heightened state of awareness and you wipe yourself out. Well, that's a fair answer. Yeah, I, I always wondered about that. Thank you very much for calling in, April. Sure, uh, thank you. And if you have any other questions for Grant um, or Jason later on, and Grant, you can give us a call at 612-375-1400. But you, you were saying that a lot of times they'll pull the energy because you've seen, as we've seen on TV and on your shows, um, that when an investigation will be going on, all of a sudden the batteries in the flashlight can dim, the, yeah. the batteries on the video pack can dim, things like that. Uh, and you think that it might be the energy from the spirit trying to pull it forth. Um, you know, when you're having these effects and it leaves you drained, what, what do you do? First of all, how do you protect yourself when you go into these investigations? Do you do anything? Is there a religious ritual you follow or, you know, do you coat yourself in pig's blood? What, do you, what kind of stuff does Grant do to protect <laughs> I wear, himself? I wear a cloak and bring my goat's head. No, I, yes, uh, excellent. I, I personally, I mean, I think people do on the stage themselves. People carry crosses, whatever. Personally, I don't do anything. Um, I've never been really afraid of it. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I just feel in, inside that that I don't have to do anything. I think personally, I don't think the the cross or the whatever is protecting you. I don't think the sage is actually protecting you. I think if anything, it's going to be your belief in that the power of that stuff that's protecting you. So as long as you feel empowered, you know, I don't think there's any threat. Now, does that make a difference? I can't prove it. I don't know, but but uh, it certainly changes your attitude. You know, if you feel that you're guarded or protected, then you're going to be less afraid. Okay. Now, we also have another question here from Monica from the boards, and she says she's a, a huge fan of the show and uh, wants to start investigating the paranormal, much like, much like TAPS does. She wanted to know, how do you get started as far as finding places to investigate? Uh, that's, that's the tricky part. Um, the best thing to do is if you're, if you're actually trying to take on clientele, um, <clears throat> rather than research places that maybe you could take a tour in or, or public places. Um, the best thing you can do for yourself is to find, like, a friend or a relative that thinks they have some activity in their home. Then you can go in there and just practice investigating without having to worry about satisfying a client or the sensitive aspects of a client, if you know what I mean. Um, that way you can focus on how to operate in the house, how to solve the problem, and then... You know, uh, the best thing to do at that point is, once you feel comfortable, is to set up like a website and uh, try and get yourself out there. Or if you don't feel confident get, getting yourself out there, um, then join up with another group and, uh, you know, you can work with them to try and, help. you know, if, you, if you're straightforward and say, look, I want to start my own group, I want you guys to teach me, um, that's the way to do it. Great. You're listening to the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. I'm your host, Dave Schrader. This evening, our guest is Grant Wilson, one of the stars and co-hosts of the hit sci-fi TV show, Ghost Hunters, that airs every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Central Eastern Time. And uh, we're going to come back with some more great questions from people that have emailed in their questions to us at dave at darknessradio.com. If you have questions for Grant, make sure to email them in at dave at darknessradio. We're also opening up the phone lines. We've got a couple of phone calls on hold waiting. You can give us a call at 612-375-1400. We'll be back with more right after this. The New York Times has raved about the show. The Star Tribune says it's paranormally funny. And the Biscayne Bugle said... How could they put this crap on the air and live with themselves? I am so, so sorry for everything that has happened. 
because in spite of what Mike says now, it is my fault because it was my project. <laughs> Everything had to be my way. And this is where we've ended up. Stay tuned. There's more to come from the darkness on the edge of town. This is Dave Schrader from the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. Each week, we delve into the web of the unknown and deal with a lot of scary subjects. But nothing makes my blood run colder or scares me more than dealing with technology. That's why we turn to the experts when we wanted our website for the show set up and maintained. In the studio with me is Don Raleigh, owner of Evolve Systems. Don and his exceptional staff were easy to work with and made setting up our site a breeze. Don, what is it that sets you apart from other web developers? Well, Dave, we make your business visions come to life by creating, maintaining, and hosting all of your internet needs. We do this by listening to our clients. We offer programs and price plans to fit any budget. And Dave, I mean any budget. Call us at 651-628-4000 and put us to work for you. Call Don at Evolve Systems, 651-628-4000. I did and I couldn't be happier with the results. That's because we take the ugh out of technology, Dave. Call us today at 651-628-4000 or visit us on the web at www.evolve-systems.com. Serving the entire United States. That's Evolve Systems. Helping you to manage change. Cheers. If you, you read Taps Paragraph every, every month, month you'll, you'll be, be able to tell, tell the difference between the absurd. I could not go to work because Bigfoot stole my car. And the creepy. <laughs> Taps Paragraph takes you where few would ever go on purpose. <laughs> From exclusive interviews with the cast of the ghost hunters to the latest trends in technology, the field of the paranormal, to join our journey. Order at tapsparamag.com. Two ghosts walk into a bar and see another ghost at the bar point at them and yell, Boo! One of the ghosts yells back, Boo who? And the ghost at the bar yells back, Well, you don't have to cry about it. Ah, uh, hell, you try writing this. You magnificent bastard, I salute you. Welcome back to the darkness on the edge of town. Good evening and welcome back to the show. This is your host, Dave Schrader. Along with us this evening, our guest he is one of the co-hosts and stars of the television show Ghost Hunters on the Sci-Fi Channel every every Wednesday night. And you can watch it. Uh, there's a replay of it at 8 p.m. Eastern Time from the week before. And then right after that, you can see the brand new episodes at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. There are about uh, two episodes in now to the last nine episodes of, of uh, Season 2. Grant Wilson is with us. And uh, appreciate your time coming with us this evening, Grant. Got a question here from Denmark. A uh, gentleman uh, by the name, oh, good grief, where did it go? Billy from Denmark. He says his first question to you, Grant, is that they're a small four person team who've just recently started investigating there in Denmark. Since they're all students, they haven't got the money to buy equipment like you do on Ghost Hunters. Do you have any good advice uh, for new started paranormal investigators? like them on how they can go about doing these type of investigations without having the money or the, the equipment that you had. Sure. I mean, uh, don't be over, I mean, don't feel like you have to have the equipment we have. I mean, we've accumulated that over, over the course of years. Um, if you got what you got to do is you got to save up between the four of you and you've got to buy at least a video camera with night shot and maybe an external, uh, IR illuminator. You've got to have at least that. Um, after that, you may want to, uh, to get like an, an audio recorder, but, uh, if you're just gonna, you, you can't just walk around with like an EMF detector. I mean, that's not gonna give you any, uh, conclusive evidence. Um, we use that primarily to find sources for false positives. I mean, we want to look for, you know, uh, EMF fields that maybe, uh, you know, would cause someone to feel like the home is paranormal. Uh, there's something paranormal in their home, rather than uh, than to go looking for a ghost and trying to prove it with EMF. So, I mean, you got to have a video camera. Still, pictures are great, but it's like reading a, a paragraph in a book and trying to pretend you understand what the whole book's about. You need video. All right, and then the second question, which I, I don't know if you have much handle on, but he'd like to know if Taps will ever consider shipping the Para magazine. Uh, that you guys do to any other countries other than U.S. and Britain? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have full intention to go wherever we need to go with it. We want to share what we found out, what our researchers have, have written with everybody. So it's just a matter of time. Yep, and if you have an interest in the TAPS Para Magazine, which is a magazine all about the paranormal, and it's put together by the fine people from the TAPS organization, you can go online to TAPS 
paramag.com, and you can order your subscription there. Fantastic articles every month talking about everything from, I think this last month they did things about uh, Champy from Lake Champlain to yeah. uh, EVPs, um, Ouija boards, things like that. So there's a, a lot of great information, a lot of great articles in there. We've got um, Kristen on the line with us on line two. Kristen, are you there? Yes. Great. If you can speak up for us so that way uh, Grant can hear you, go ahead with your question. Okay. My question is, um, is there ever been a place that you've gone to where you really feel like you'd like to go back? Maybe you felt like you could get more from the place or there was something more to be seen or heard there? Well, one thing that's hard to get from the show is, I mean, it looks like we hit a place once and, you know, give them our findings and take off, hightail it out of there. We're, um, Every place that we investigate, we uh, we leave them in the hands of a, of a capable group if we're if it's not local to us. And I always would love to go back to any case um, and investigate it again and, and get more information to help people out. But um, you know, I love the Eastern State Penitentiary. Uh, that place was amazing. Um, but I, I did do some work. I lived in Italy for two years, and I did some stuff while I was there. I'm kind of on the side, and uh, I would love to go back there and visit those places. Good grief. Are we getting uh, EVP con uh, conversations? I don't know what that was. It's coming in from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have any other questions for him, Kristen? Um, the second part of the question was, um, is there a place you've gone where you kind of hoped that you would get something or felt that you would because of the reports you'd heard, and then when you got there, you were a little bit disappointed on what you actually received there? Yeah, in fact, um, you're going to see that in these upcoming episodes. You're going to see that uh, that you know we we have some places that we we really get in the vibe from, and uh, and nothing happens, and it kind of bothers us. But uh, one place that I can think of that you would know is the Queen Mary. I mean, that was we had such high hopes for that place, and uh, you know we got let down even even worse than not catching anything. We got someone tried to dupe us. You know? Right, and for so, those yeah, of you that might not that. have seen that episode, they uh, one of the claims was that this room, one of the bedrooms, uh, the bed would be unmade. Um, so the guys actually set up a video camera in the room, and when they came back in to, to investigate, the bed blankets had been pulled back, so they rewound it, and they could see on the video how it was the, the blankets would pull themselves off. But who was it, Dave Tango, that actually realized... Tango. Yeah, the, the stop and start of the videotape. They stopped and started. I think Jason mentioned last time he was on like two or three times. Um, right. We had since right. reviewed the tape and found other attempts earlier on in the tape. Um, you could see the blanket skipping around and things just bouncing around like, uh, you know, you could tell it was on pause. And if you crank the volume up, you can actually hear the ding ding of the pausing, uh, so, you know, the sound effect of the pausing of the camera. Great. Well, thank you very much for calling in your question tonight, Kristen. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And the phone lines are open at 612-375-1400. That's 612-375-1400. We have Jennifer on line three. Jennifer, can you hear us? I can. Hi, guys. Hey, Jennifer. Hi, Grant. It's Bondo. How are you doing? I'm fine. Um, <laughs> I was calling in to ask, this is one of my issues, um, if you... In, if you're investigating and you encounter what, you know, everyone else has classified as a demon entity at a client's house when you're investigating. Um, but, for instance, in my case, you don't really believe in demons. What should you do so you don't lose the client's confidence in your abilities or their confidence in me doing what's needed to get their house clean? Okay, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, whether you believe in demons or not, there is a style of, of haunting or a style of, of paranormal activity that you come across that is very negative and uh, terrifies the homeowner and can actually physically um, harm them. And, but they're, they're very, very, very rare. A true mm -hmm. case is, is rare, and, and chances are you're not going to see it. But um, if you experience that and you don't necessarily believe it, that it's a demon, that's fine. What you need to do is you need to be, pay uh, careful attention uh, to what the client needs. Um, you know, don't necessarily put your beliefs before those of the clients. If they believe that it's demonic and they believe that a blessing will help them, then get them a blessing because it certainly won't hurt. Um, but you, you, uh, you need to make sure that, that you understand what you're dealing with because uh, they, they can be tricky. They can 
that this kind of hauntings can be tricky and they can they can tear your team apart. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, you, you definitely your your pri your priority is the client, and okay. uh, you want to do what you can to help them without scaring them anymore. So yeah, that is that it's, that's pretty much what I had always negative. thought, but I was so afraid that my lack of belief might do some damage and whatever you know whoever I had come in to help cleanse it then I was so afraid that I would be detrimental well what you want to do is like I said you want to um, just be able to recognize that style of haunting so you know mm -hmm. when you know when you have to call someone in and uh, and then when you call someone in just leave it in their hands let okay. them handle the client let the client you know talk to them let him do his blessing or whatever he needs to do and yeah. you just sit back this is someone that you brought in and this is their expertise let them do it and you just okay. sit back great well thank you very much for great. calling in jennifer thanks dave you have a great night thanks you thank too you. bye yeah, great great a unique question <laughs> yeah you know what and what i'm curious about actually with that i mean that that makes a, a great point if you have a well-rounded group and you've got different team members that are strong in different situations, even though you may not believe in what's going on, there might be somebody that's better suited to handle these problems, correct? Right. I mean, in TAPS our, our itself, we have such a, uh, an eclectic bunch. I mean, we have people who have, you know, who are quote-unquote men of the cloth in their religion and in, in various religions. We have, you know, everything from housewives to, you know, people who, who um, work right under Donald Rumsfeld and stuff like that. I mean, we have, we have everything, you name it. And, uh, you know, it, you just got to know the expertise of the people in your group and, and pull out and utilize who you, you know, who's best suited for the job. We've got a question here from Skylar Jenks. She, uh, she or he, I apologize, I don't know if it's a male or female. They wanted to know what happened to your demonologist. They noticed that they were in a couple of the episodes of first season and really seemed to have vanished for the second season and want to know what you can do to lure them back to the show. <laughs> well, um, we, we only bring them in when we feel that, uh, that we really need them. Um, you know, otherwise, um, we, have, we have people that are very... Um, very, uh, their expertise lie in investigation, and they're very good at it. Um, the demonologists are good at it. Don't get me wrong, but uh, um, it's sometimes it's it's hard to coordinate their schedules um, with the filming too, because you've got to understand that um, it takes about two and a half weeks to film one episode, and you have to be available for almost that entire time. Um, so Keith and Carl, um, it can be difficult to schedule with them. And uh, Carl's trying to start uh, his own group. I mean, sorry, Keith is trying to start his own group um, that specifically uh, focuses on demonology, and they're doing well. So he's, he's spending a lot of time trying to, uh, to focus on things that he needs to besides the show. So it's very hard to get them on. Great. Now let me ask you this. Um, you know, let's, let's stir the pot a little bit on, on something. Since you, guys have, since you guys have come on, uh, everybody and their brother wants to be a paranormal investigator. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's new groups popping up every day, hundreds of them popping up. Everybody that has an interest in ghosts uh, doing this. It's kind of like, you know, whenever the 101 Dalmatian movies came out, everybody wanted a, you know, Dalmatian puppy. But what they <laughs> right. didn't realize was that Dalmatians are really hard to work with and they're not great with kids. Right, um, exactly. You know, and I find that that's kind of what's going on now with, with guys, you know, shows like yours and Most Haunted and Dead Famous and, and all these different ghost hunting shows is now you've got all these people out there. I think, you know, and I, I'm not an investigator, uh, you know, I don't even play one on TV, but <laughs> I think that, uh, are, are you worried that they're destroying or, or making it worse out there by putting together these groups and not having the training or having the understanding of what they should be doing? I don't know. Right. I'm trying to be politically correct here. I guess there's a lot of idiots out there running around doing stupid stuff, it, taking on go. stuff that they should not do. Um, and, you know, Lloyd Auerbach, who was on a few weeks ago, brought up a good point, mentioning that it's good to have, and as we were just talking to a little bit ago, it's good to have people that are strong because you don't just go in and investigate a home and, oh, shit, yeah, you're, you're, there's a ghost here. You know, yeah. it's, it's, you know, you've got to have somebody there that can take care of 
the people and their problems and the questions. Oh, yeah. And that's important. And that, unfortunately, is something that's not really shown on, on your show or really any of these shows. They glamorize the spook of it and all that stuff. But how important is that to have people like, I know Donna was kind of there in the first season, was, was the one kind of, you know, going through the questions and, and seemed to be kind of the support for the family going through these things. How important do you think it is to, to have somebody like that that can be kind of the liaison between the investigators and the, the family? Well, I, I do a lot of that. I spend a lot of time talking to the, uh, the family members um, and trying to understand their situation so I can find not only, I mean, during, the, during our investigation, we're going to definitely find uh, physical evidence of haunting or not a haunting. We're able to debunk stuff. But you've also got to analyze the psychological and see why they might feel the way they feel or if they have any kind of um, stress factor in their life that might uh, might generate a, a, a fear or anything like that. It's very important. In fact, um, when we investigate, oftentimes the interview, um, this is off the show, the interview will last the entire investigation. Um, we'll bring in different people. That someone will talk and just, just sit and talk with them. And then we'll, we'll change. That person will shift to someone else. And... Uh, Afterwards, they'll compare notes, so you'll, you'll see how consistent the stories were and things like that. And you just get different people um, and their perspectives to help the client. Um, but to answer your first part, uh, I, I, I think that it's great that people want to, to do this. And the show certainly makes it look somewhat easy, um, but it's not. It's very delicate, and there are people out there that need, really need help, and they're calling you in as a professional, and you have to act that way. But I got to say, a lot of the groups that are starting up, at least when they are able to contact me, um, are asking the right questions, and uh, they're they're taking their time moving from thinking they can do it to actually going to someone's house. So um, not only are there a lot of groups popping up, but if they're popping up because they're watching our show, then chances are, you know, they're they're at least popping up for the right reasons. And uh, you know, all you can do is hope for the best. You know. Are there books? What what would you suggest? I'm a new guy that wants to do this. I really want to go out and investigate and try to help people. What what books? What courses? What what things would you suggest that I take or get involved in before I go out and try to do investigations? And and about how long would you say is a, a good idea before if I put together my group today? I you know Tim and my friend CJ and Robin our phone girl and you know Mickey the janitor. We want to become ghost hunters. How long should it take? before we actually go out and start trying to investigate somebody's home? Well, it's going to be different with each group. Um, but like I said, you want to get into someone you know already, and you can, you can figure it out that way. Um, but like we, we bring groups into the TAPS family, which is a network across the globe of respectable groups. And uh, we won't let people into our family unless they've been around for at least a year. And that's just one of the requirements. So take a good year, I would say, and try to really understand what you're getting into. As far as books, um, I don't know, my mentality on it is don't, I'm not looking for people who believe in ghosts to join my team. I'm looking for people with an area of knowledge or expertise that we don't already have. And that way, I mean, you're investigating the paranormal more than you are looking for the ghosts. So if you can tell me how, what makes uh, the plumbing work or what makes uh, how a house creak or whatever, I need to know that more than I need to know your conviction and belief for, of a ghost. That's great. So That's if you want to read a book, read about psychology, read about what makes things tick, you know what I mean? That type of so thing. So good home improvement books even might be a good thing to check exactly. out. Exactly, at Home Depot. <laughs> okay. No, well, that's, that's, that's important because I do think, you know, I just, I worry about it because I, you know, I, I'm a member of all these paranormal boards too, and I go read, and I watch how they tear your show apart and tear all these other shows apart, and it's sure. so easy to sit in your ivory tower and tell them how wrong they're doing it, and, well, we're going to put together our own group, and we're going to do it the right way. There's so much that you guys can't show on the air, well, which is, let's face it, it's boring. Nobody wants to sit there yeah, and watch right. Donna interview the family for two hours and then have, you know, Keith come in and interview the family for two hours, maybe do a couple highlight questions to kind of give us an idea if they're if they're nuts or not, you know. Right, but, right. But for the most part, there's a lot of it that's cut out, and there's a lot more to it than just making up t-shirts and ball caps and, and heading out to check out people's homes. Oh, yeah, we take these cases very seriously. I mean, we, I, I am in contact with many of the clients on a nearly daily basis, um, you know, trying to help them through from long distance or, or 
coordinating um, visits from other test family groups to these places that you've seen on the show. And like I said, it takes about two and a half weeks to film one 43-minute episode. So, I mean, it's, they do leave a lot out. Good advice from Ghost Hunter Grant Wilson from the TV show Ghost Hunters on the Sci-Fi Channel. You're listening to the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. At the top of the hour, we should be joined by Jason Hawes, the other co-host of the show. Jason and Grant will be on hand to answer your questions. If you have questions that you'd like to ask of either gentleman, you can give us a call at 612-375-1400, or you can email in your questions at dave at darknessradio.com. We'll be back with more of your questions for Grant right after this. It will keep you on the edge of your seat. I must have drank me about 15 Dr. Peppers. I gotta pay. Just don't get any on the floor. Hurry back. There is more to come from the darkness on the edge of town. Try Minnesota Mortgage was founded on one simple principle, to be your complete mortgage resource. Keith Troutman and the experts at Try Minnesota Mortgage will assist you with all your needs. They've built a reputation for client satisfaction and are devoted to making the mortgage process as easy as possible. You get to work with a broker that understands your needs. Finding the right loan is only the beginning. Try Minnesota Mortgage will assist you every step of the way to ensure smooth sailing with personal one-on-one -on -one help. I'm Dave Schrader, the host of Darkness on the Edge of Town. When I bought my new home, I turned to Keith Troutman to help me. He made what could have been a very stressful time easy and painless. He was considerate and realizes that this is more than just a job to him. It's the future for you. I recommend them to my friends, and I'm happy to recommend them to you. To take the first step to a financially free tomorrow, call 952-223-5000 or visit them on the web at cruiseatclose.com. For a fresh start, no matter what your current situation, call Keith at Tri Minnesota Mortgage. That's 952-223-5000. As Keith says, it's your money. Keep more of it. That's Tri Minnesota Mortgage, 952-223-5000. 2006 is here, and for many of you, another year has passed without treating you and your loved ones to a much needed getaway. Rocky Shores Resort has just what you're looking for. Join owners Jerry and Kim Pipp at their family theme resort that offers a heated outdoor swimming pool, volleyball court, playground, spacious lodge with games and activities for the whole family and more. With six two and three bedroom cabins that are affordable, comfortable, and fully furnished and 12 seasonal RV sites, Rocky Shores Resorts is perfect for a private escape or for a family reunion. The resorts are located on the east shores of Bowstring Lake in the heart of the Chippewa National Forest. Here you can relax and enjoy nature in the great north woods, experience dozens of area attractions, and get hooked on some of the best northern perch, panfish, bass, and walleye fishing in northern Minnesota. Call 1-866-878-0101 to book reservations or check out their website at rockyshoresresort.com for more information. This year, don't ignore the call of the wild. Embrace it and enjoy yourselves. That number again is 1-866-878-0101. Rocky Shores Resort is open year-round. Call today. If you read Taps 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 every month, You'll, You'll be, be able, able to tell, tell the difference, difference between the absurd. Could not go to work because Bigfoot stole my car. And the creepy. <laughs> Taps Fire Bag takes you where few would ever go on purpose. <laughs> From exclusive interviews with the cast of The Ghost Hunters to the latest trends in technology, the field of the paranormal. To join our journey, order at tapsparamag.com. You hear footsteps and things bumping and banging in the middle of the night. Could it be paranormal activity? Or is it just Dave and Tim raiding your fridge? Mmm, beer. Strange things happen in the darkness on the edge of town. Good evening and welcome back to the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. This is Dave Schroeder, your host, along with me, co-host and producer Tim Dennis. On the line with us this evening, we have from the TV show Ghost Hunters on the Sci-Fi Channel every Wednesday night. You can catch brand new episodes at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can catch a rerun of the following or the previous week's show at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and that's on the Sci-Fi Channel on your cable network. Grant, appreciate you being on the show with us tonight. We have another call coming in here, and uh, it is Sean... On line two. Sean, are you with us? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, go ahead, Sean. You had a question for Grant? Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about investigating the location of the station fire? Of uh, the station fire in Warwick? Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, right well, street. We've, we've thought about doing a lot of um, places like that, like Ground Zero, the station fire. Um, we wouldn't do the station fire just because it's, you know, it's still sensitive around here, and uh, there's nothing to really investigate. It's just a, just a lot with a bunch of uh, memorials to people. 
And, uh, you know, I think we would probably do it, be doing it some disrespect, um, marching in there with all of our equipment and stuff. Yep. People have asked if we would do, like, Ground Zero in New York City. And we, we just want to, we, to us, it's like investigating a graveyard. We just let them be, you know. Yeah. It's not, we want to, we want to help clients. And, uh, you know, if someone thinks their house is haunted, give us a call. But, uh, you know, if you think your graveyard is haunted, well, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you for calling in, Sean. Yep. Thanks. Thank if, you, you. if you have a question for Grant, you can give us a call at 612-375-1400. Got a question here emailed in from David in Louisville, Texas. Uh, first of all, he says he loves a radio show and he's a big fan of Ghost Hunters, so thank you very much for that. And Thanks. would like to know why was the decision given to do two investigation, investigations per show rather than one? You know, that is um, completely an editorial thing. Um, a lot of times, um, cases we go on aren't interesting enough to be a, be a full episode. Um, and, uh, sometimes they are, sometimes they're, full enough, they're interesting enough to be a two hour episode, but, uh, that's just there. If you notice when a place is really interesting, it has its own episode. Um, but, uh, when they can, when they can trim it down, they want to, cause they want to give the audience, the view watchers of the show, um, as much as they can. So they want to, they want to send you to they want you to see as many places as you can. Uh, if they can tell the full story in a half an hour, then great. If they have to take an hour, even better. So it's it's just a matter of Hollywood convenience. Okay, David would also like to know uh, why sci-fi, and I, I know it's not sci-fi; it's Pilgrim Films. I guess it does all of your video and editing. Yeah. Um, why do they put in all the video subliminals, the flashing ghost heads, the images on the screen, uh, when the material feels you know that you, you can. The material that you actually do supports the content. You don't need that kind of flashing stuff. Why do they add that, and how do you guys feel about that stuff when you watch the, the review of the show? You know, we get a lot of that. I, I personally hate it. I think it's stupid and unnecessary. Um, but uh, I, I think that it, it kind of makes the show have a different feel, and it doesn't need to go that way. But, um, you know, they have control over that, and they, they're able to do that. And, you know... Um, why do they do it? Well, they do it for the same reason that the music's there, to create an atmosphere and create a mood. And, uh, you know, I, I can see why they do it, but I, I don't like it. I, sure. I think it's silly. Well, it's adding a little bit of that dramatic. I think the only those don't bother me, the little flashes in between scenes. The only time it's bothered me is when they're showing evidence, videotaped evidence or anything like that. Yeah. And they'll yeah. flash something. Or the commercials, and I know you've probably heard this a thousand times, there's been a couple of commercials where they're, playing something up and they'll play a, a sound bite which isn't even part of your show like, yeah. <laughs> i think there was one of them where they heard the get out and yeah that was uh that was in the first they were advertising the first episode and as soon as we saw that commercial we're like what the heck where does that evp come right. from <laughs> <laughs> so but, uh, i mean uh, the commercial is different from the show but uh yeah at one time i remember watching they showed us one of the few chances we got to see an episode ahead of time um they showed uh um it, they were, we were investigating, like, a kid's room, and we're walking around the room, and all of a sudden this, like, looked, looked like a melting skull or something came flying at us. And I was like, what? Wait a minute. You're in a kid's room. <laughs> Why are you showing me a bleeding, melting <laughs> skull? It was a little over the top. <laughs> they could have just shown, like, a baby doll, you know, like a sure. doll head or something. But that has nothing to do with you guys. It's all in the no, production no, company. Is that the same with the equipment? I know Steve alluded to that on our show a while ago, and you get a lot of people out there belly aching because you're not using the equipment right. I mean, let's face it. This equipment wasn't made for ghost hunting. Mm -hmm. None of this equipment was made for ghost hunting. So none of it's actually being used for what its intended purpose is. Right. You know, but, I mean, do, do they tell you, hey, use the cool, you know, EMF detector. This will look great in the scene. Do they ever affect how you guys do an investigation? Um, well, they'll try. They'll, they'll be like, well, go out there and just have something in your hand. It's like, well, I wouldn't. Come on, Grant, you can tell me the truth. I won't tell anybody. Just no, we're very practical. <laughs> we're, we're just like, you know, look, if I wouldn't have that in my hand, I'm not going to take it. Okay. Um, but uh, a lot of times, they don't show a lot of the equipment we use. I mean, we have ambient the thermometers all over the place. We have all sorts of other stuff that we use. But now, they, explain, too, for the people that are just tuning in that don't really know all these terms, an ambient thermometer does what? An ambient thermometer actually measures the air temperature in a room. Um, when people walk around with digital uh, thermometers, the ones that have, like, a laser pointer on it and right. stuff, they're measuring... Um, uh, an area of an object, and 
you know, a lot of times, you know, it doesn't look as interesting as uh, on TV as if you go and put a box in the middle of a room that reads the temperature. You know, they want to see you with something in your hand that they can follow. So, Especially I mean, a cool little Star Trek-looking laser pointer. That Right, exactly. Now, how do you, I mean, does that get frustrating for you guys, too? Because I know you guys see all the banter and the crabbing and whining and that, oh, you guys are frauds and you're using those and those IR thermometers don't register the, the airspace. They're registering the concrete wall 20 feet away that the laser hey, lights actually there. Okay. Right. So but you guys, he, see, that's what I appreciate. I just want you guys to know, I mean, I had the chance to see you guys at Penn State, at the yeah, Penn State great. conference, and it was a great opportunity to see you guys because, you know, when not knowing much about the paranormal, you know, other than the experiences I've had and reading some of the books out there by Hans Holzer and Scott Rogo and things like that, mm-hmm. you know, you guys are really the kind of first show, besides the hyped up corny MTV fear shows and things where they've got cameras strapped to the front of a person as he's running down the hall screaming. Right. Um, you guys are really the first ones that I watched that, that broke down and showed how to do all this. So as far as I knew, you guys were doing it the right way because you're professionals but then i would read these things and and see on these uh, sites and blogs and and all that 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 the equipment was being used improperly and it makes me question not you guys but just what's going on but then when right. i got a chance to see you guys and you guys you guys are onto it you know that you know it's hollywood they want you to use the cool little laser pointer gun and you're not trying to baffle or screw anybody or or uh, convince them that you guys are doing something that nobody else knows how to do uh right. you're putting on a tv show and part of it's got to be entertaining and look cool well, and we, we've, I've said many times before that, look, we're, TAPS isn't necessarily the best out there. I mean, we don't feel that way at all. Um, we feel we're trying to do it the right way. I'm sure every group feels that way. Right. But, uh, you know, they pick, t- picked us to do a show because we're so bold about trying to debunk a haunting in an attempt to have good evidence. And that's, why, that's what they tell us, at least, why they, why they just wanted to to pick our group and if people think well, sure that, and you also have a dynamic for your group i mean there's so many different characters and so many different bunch of goofballs. right i mean it's a it's a great deal and i wish they would show that more grant because i got to tell you when i first met you you know people are really missing out on the show not knowing you it's kind of a, a shame because when i met you i was expecting that kind of quiet mousy guy that's just going to stand there and okay jay whatever you say jay and you are hilarious you have such a great personality <laughs> you're, you're so you. outgoing and uh you know, I mean, it was just, you're not anything like you appear on the TV show. Yeah, I hate that. They make me look like this stiff little nerd, which I am a little bit, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I like to have a good time. Yeah, but you were great. I mean, I don't think you were a nerd at all. You come off so human. Both of you do, actually. I mean, Jay, you know, that's the other thing. You guys are, are the um, products of bad editing in a lot of the sta- scenes. Yes, that's uh, the truth, you man. Know, I because, would watch the show and roll our eyes. <laughs> right, yeah, because, I, you know, I, like I said, I got to hang out with you guys at the con out there. I got a chance to see, you know, I, I even got to sit, sit in the back seat behind you, which was surreal in itself after watching you on the show <laughs> for so long. But, you know, there's not that uh, crabby Jay guy and, and the nerdy, quiet Grant guy. You guys are hilarious together, and, and it's such, you know, you have such a great dynamic. I can see you getting to know you and, and having the opportunity. And let me tell you, it's not because I'm some wonderkind that they invited me in on this, ladies and gentlemen. They're just that great, and they're that approachable when you meet them in person that, you know, if you buy them a few drinks, they'll take you for a ride in the Taps Mobile. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But well, the, uh, thing is, the thing is, is that, I mean, we've We've never aspired to be on TV. I mean, in fact, we were reluctant to even do this, and we, we almost turned it down, but then kind of the word was out there, and they were going to do the show anyway, and we figured, well, if we don't do it, someone else will, and how are they going to do it? So, um, you know, we, we're we normal people. I mean, I, I, I've i never wanted to be on TV, and I, you know, I'm kind of, it's kind of rough at times, so... Uh, sure. Of course, I'm a regular guy. Right, and um, they are, and that'll blow you away. I mean, so so many people are, you know, you're expecting to run into Jack Nicholson's and, and you know, these highfalutin people, and Jason and Grant are two of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in person, and they stood there, they stood there for everybody's pictures, everybody's autographs. They had such a great time. As a matter of fact, do you guys have any coming up uh, appearances, any cons, any uh, conferences, anything coming up? Because if you get a chance, you got to see them. We do. We're actually going to be in uh, in a conference in Virginia. If you go to our website, you'll see uh, a link on the lower right hand side. Um, and it's the website be, is the is, uh, Atlantic, the Atlantic pa- Paranormal Society dot com. Okay, and you could just type it in all as one word, right? The Atlantic right. Paranormal Society dot com. Go there, and then like, you said on the lower left corner. Lower right corner. I'm lower sorry. right corner. Okay. And uh, we we love it when people come and meet us in person because it gives us a chance to to meet the people first off, and we've always loved meeting the people. They're such interesting people 
And, uh, you know, you get to see us unedited, which is the way we like it. <laughs> right. And you guys have got some fantastic footage that doesn't make it on the show that you're able to show. That was a great part to be there and, and kind of witness. And also what I loved was, you know, all these uh, armchair quarterbacks at home that sit there and break down your film footage and gripe about your problems and what you guys did wrong. To see you guys in person, and I'm not putting them down. They have every reason because, like I said, you guys are the, the victims of bad editing in a lot of sense. Um, getting the chance to go see you guys and watch you break down your own evidence and make fun of some of the stuff that you've caught on tape or on audio and, and just kind of watch you guys work was phenomenal. Um, so I do you know, recommend anybody that gets a chance to go out and see these guys. And, you know, Grant, i got to ask, when, when are we going to see some of these extra footage that you guys do on, on the DVD sets? Even the uh, stuff that, you know, not necessarily from the show, there was that swinging gate, and no. I don't want to give too much away because if you guys show that at, at all the conferences, that was hysterical, and it can't be ruining anybody's privacy because there's no information, you can't see where it's at or anything, right. but but are we going to be able to see some, some cool Well, here's the thing, I mean, like we, we, for 15 years we've been doing this, and, well, you know, obviously as TAPS we've been doing it a little bit less, but, um, no. That's right, about 15 years. But we uh, we have had complete client confidentiality, and right. um, we respect the client. Anything we videotape or capture there is their property. They're, they are entitled to it more than we are. And, um, you know, we've caught some amazing stuff, but it belongs to them. And so there are just a few, a handful of things that we've gotten the okay to show. And... Uh, we like to, to keep those to be able to show for the people who actually make, you know, the effort to come out and oh, see sure. us and talk to us and support whatever group we're trying to support. All right. Well, we've got um, coming up to the top of the hour here. After the top of the hour, we've got our news break. And then we're going to be joined by Jason, um, who's going to be coming on to the show with Grant as well. We'll be doing uh, some more talking, answering some more of your questions. You're listening to the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. Our guest this evening is Grant Wilson from the TV show Ghost Hunters on the Sci-Fi Channel every Wednesday night with new episodes airing at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You're listening to the Darkness on the Edge of Town radio show. This is your host, Dave Schrader, along with me this evening, my co-host, Tim Dennis. If you want more information about the Ghost Hunters, you can check out their website for full information and updates at the Atlantic Paranormal Society. 